usual, this is D-Light Channel, Development, Empowerment, and Leadership Initiative. You are welcome to this week's video as we continue our conversation on entrepreneurship made simple. Last week, we had an exciting time focusing on what happened at the startup phase. So this week, we are moving to the next phase, which is the growth phase. Now, as the word suggests, when you are in this phase, you are expanding, customers are increasing, your presence is, in, is expanding, the volume that you do is increasing, and before you know it, you are adding more and more personnel to the team. What should you be doing at this phase and how should you position to run? A lot of the things we said you needed to do at the startup phase are still relevant here. If you missed that video, please go back and watch. But at this phase, one thing that you cannot do without is to ensure that you take time to revisit whatever plans you had and then do a more thorough, rigorous, detailed, and market speaking plan. Plenty English. What am I saying? Before you started, you had an idea. If I can do this, this way, that way, price it like this, sell it like that, promote it this way, I should be able to do one, two, three. Practically speaking and from experience, by the time you go through the startup phase, you will realize that there is usually a big difference between reality and projections or plan. So what you need to do once you have gone through the startup phase and you are a bit settled in the market and you have an idea of what you are doing, is to take the new knowledge that you have and recreate your plan medium and long term so that there is at least a document or a general idea of of whatever you are trying to do do not hold the old plan in your hand and then the new one exists in your head i plead with you sit down go through the necessary strategy session hopefully at this point you will have identified one or two critical personnel in your team that are foundational and they are significant in whatever you are planning to do. Bring them to the planning table with you. Consult your mentors. Speak widely to those who can guide you. And let the meshing and the melting of all these voices produce you a plan. Like I said, this is not because you want to go and drop that business plan with the bank. And I'll get to that in a, in a bit but it is more as a tool to ensure that there is clarity of thought and that all the variables have been properly balanced as you try to pursue that dream or that vision that you have. That's number one. You need a revised plan to take you forward. Number two is you need to know that you can no longer run away from technology. So, as you are dealing with the growth phase, you must find a means of identifying relevant technologies and be wise enough to make the right investment in technology so that you can scale gradually. You do not have to introduce technology as a big bank somewhere down the line that will cost you a lot more, cause a lot of disruptions. Even you will not be sure of what works and what doesn't work and can be a pre pretty wasteful or expensive exercise. So what you need to start doing is try, try to be deliberate in embedding technology in your operations. Why is this important? Number one is you can't run away from it, whether it's with the banks or with your customers or with even the regulators. Technology is becoming an operational requirement. So don't shy away from it, don't run away from it. Number two is the fact that as you expand, one thing that can help you with controls, that does not carry any sentiment, that does not look at anybody's face is technology. If you build it properly, 
and you build your internal controls into this tech into the technology architecture it becomes very stable of it becomes a very stable operation it is very difficult for people to just sidetrack you and beat your system without you being aware and that way you can scale with some measure of confidence so number two thing you need to do is to build technology into your operations number three and a major major problem from the growth phase is funding funding when it is time to scale all of a sudden you see market openings market opportunities but you are wondering how do i finance it i will tell you my own bias and i'm saying it from my own experience as much as you can stay away from debt yes stay away from debt particularly if you are running an environment where your bankers are not interested in relationships but are only interested in transactions why you see when you start leveraging your business and you start taking on expensive debt if you suffer any slowdown or any wrong decision in your business and your bankers are not interested in relationship they can shut down your business simply because they want to keep their numbers healthy in this market particularly the nigerian market the bankers have no sympathy or no emotions at all for whatever you are dealing with in your business all that they care about is there is a need to service this loan you need to keep it coming in cbn is going to do this my boss is going to do that and therefore you want to think and think and think and think and think very hard before you take on that debt it is easier cheaper more peaceful more sustainable for you to grow organically from whatever you are making for the business find a way of plowing it back one branch at a time one staff at a time one new product at a time that way you are more in control of what you are doing but if you absolutely have to take on debt then you need to be very very careful you need to check and seek for opinions and consult the experts a few rules of the thumb is very very necessary here number one is that obviously go for the debt that has the low as low a rate as possible do not take it simply because it is easy to access be very conscious of how much is this debt going to cost me now and into the future so see how you can get the lowest rate possible the second relevant point here is that build as long a period of moratorium as you can into that facility What's the moratorium period? That is the period between when you get the funds and when you start paying it back. What that does for you is that it gives you enough time to deal with whatever teething and setup problems you may have with the expansion um, or whatever growth efforts that you are making. That way, whatever problem you encounter, you can at least find a way of solving it before the payback becomes due number three is that you then need to prioritize the repayment of that facility above everything else why because what happens is that for every default your credit rating goes down okay and then the amount you are paying gets complicated because they begin to compound the interest itself it is no longer the principal that is now bearing compound interest the interest again start bearing compound interest and before you know it a very small facility can get so big that it can choke you so you need to be deliberate to prioritize the repayment of the facility so that you do not find yourself overtaken by something bigger than what you have anticipated as you run your business so i've said enough about that but what i'm saying to you is that as much as you can stay away from debt and do your best to ensure that you are funding your growth organically number four and the last i'm going to make on this week's video because of time 
please make haste slowly. Yeah? It is not every opportunity that presents itself to you that you should take. I said something before, and I think I heard it from Wale Tinubu, the CEO of Wando Oil. He says, because you have found, because you have a line of sight to the market, does not mean you have a path to the market. Don't grow too quickly that you are not able to control quality. Don't grow too quickly that you are not able to control service. Don't go too quick, too quickly to the point that your brand get diluted and you are not in charge or on top of your brand. You need to see to it that you grow in a measured manner. That is super, super important. So make haste slowly. Make haste slowly. That is why you needed the plan and that is why even whether you have the plan written or not or updated or not, just know that don't spread yourself too thin that you lose control of the enterprise that you are trying to run. What will be the result if you get these four things done? You should slowly be building a brand, a recognizable brand with its identity and its footprint. You need to be deliberate about the four things I've said and you also, over and above that, Put some deliberate effort into promoting that brand and be clear as to the positioning of the brand. I will speak more about branding in the next video because this phase, the growth phase, is the phase where you need to get very deliberate about your brand positioning. Let me stop at this point so that I don't go too long-winded this week again. But next week, I'll try and delve a bit deeper into the conversation around brand building because this is one thing you need to deal with at the growth phase. Thanks for being here once again this week. Please feel free to share, drop your comments, join us on Telegram channel, and we'll be happy to be of help to you. But whatever you do, don't ever forget that t Mark is still my name, and all I've tried to do is what? Make a little difference. See you next week. Bye!